Wrong button. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here with me on this Tuesday morning, December 6th, for our daily devotion together. Sorry about yesterday. I um, uh, had an appointment to, for funeral planning um, that came up Sunday late, and uh, I didn't get time to record or anything else. So um, I had to just say, I'm not going to be here. So good morning, though. We're back today. Uh, live and in person. Greek Tuesday, so I do have to get down to Merrill here this, the, after after we're done here, so things will move a little bit quicker today, but uh, I'm glad you're here taking a little time in God's Word, and I apologize for yesterday's lack. Um, today, on this December 6th, um, you probably already know this, but Nicholas of Myrna, pastor. And today is a commemoration of Nicholas of Myrna. Now, that's St. Nick, right? That's St. Nicholas. Um, of, the, of the many saints commemorated by the Christian church, Nicholas, um, he died in 342, is one of the best known. Very little is known historically of him, though there was a church of St. Nicholas in Constantinople as early as the 6th century, so a couple hundred years after his uh, death, research has affirmed that there was a bishop by the name of Nicholas in the city of Myra, I think I said Myrna either earlier, it's Myra, in uh, Lycia, part of today what would be Turkey, um, in the 4th century, which would be the 300s. Um, from that coastal location, legends about Nicholas have traveled throughout time and time and space. <laughs> he is associated with charitable giving in many countries around the world and is portrayed as the rescuer of sailors, the protector of children, and the friend of people in distress or need. In commemoration of Sinterklaas, Dutch for Saint Nicholas, in English, Santa Claus. December 6th is a day for giving and receiving gifts in many parts of Europe. Um, and here, uh, some people in the U.S. too, uh, with a, start the day with a simple, simple gift. Um, something small, usually candy, particularly for children. Um, but this is, this is where we get the idea of Santa Claus. One of the legends is that um, at a... <clears throat> Sorry, at a at a meeting of the church, um, Nicholas punched Arius, um, who was a teaching um, heterodox, fall, or other teachings which actually were false teachings. He denied the um, divine, fully divine nature of um, Christ, and and tried to teach that Christ was um, uh, was a created creature of God coming coming not in the creation but after the creation um, which is heresy and uh, and again the, the story goes that that in the argument Arius punched um, uh, punched or that, that Nicholas punched Arius uh, which makes today slap a Harris heretic day um, don't do that don't do that all right so that's our that's our commemoration today Nicholas of Myra, pastor. Um, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's get down to who's here today. Let's see here. There's Jerry. Good morning, Rainy. Okay, you guys got rain. We're not. We were overcast last yesterday evening, but afternoon. But today it's fairly sunny out. Glenn. Good morning. Deb and Ann. Good morning to you guys. Michael. Good morning. Water temperature in the Atlantic, hundreds of miles out, are 80 degrees. You know, I think I did know that. Um, there is a the the NOAA does monitor um, ocean temperatures. They've got floating. Uh, I'll call them buoys for lack of a better word with te with thermometers out there. That's how how they track the things oh, in the Pacific, at least. Um, how they track the El Ninos or, El, or, or La Ninas, um, which are affected by ocean temperature. So yeah, I did know that the water's uh, warmer out there. In fact, even even the Great Lakes, um, as they even as they cool down, and warm up, the temperatures further out are different than what they are on the on the shoreline. 
eh, it's a lot of water and it takes time to change water's temperature. That's why, that's why areas that are near uh, water, coastlines are usually temperate. They, they don't fluctuate in their temperature as much because <clears throat> the water kind of holds the heat. Glenn, good morning to you. Oh, I already said good morning, Glenn. Good morning to you again, Glenn. Kathy, good morning. Uh, back in Michigan, huh? Okay. Jill and John, good morning to you guys. <coughs> Renee, good morning. It's raining, but it's okay. Yeah. We will not be seeing rain again until spring here. Um, we're, we're in the 30s during the day now and uh, teens at night. Um, we'll probably get colder yet. Uh, where was I here? Bonnie's here. <laughs> 12 degrees, yep. And Verna, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you. Connie, good morning. Here almost, okay, all right. Well, have some coffee, get the blood flowing, thin it out. Uh, Ashley, good morning to you. Uh, Kendra, good morning. Uh, and to everyone else who's lurking in the background, hello and good morning to you and to those watching later or on YouTube this afternoon, good, good day to you. Let's go ahead and get started. Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order that we use each day here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 56, and it kind of jumps around on the verses here. we got 1 and 2, and then 5 through 11, and then 13. So it, it jumps around a little bit here, but Psalm, psalm 56. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me. All day long an attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. All day long they injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps, as they have waited for my life. For their crime will they escape? In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? For you have delivered my soul from death, my, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> it's amazing when I read the Psalms, how much they seem like today as well. Uh, man tramples on me. My enemies trample all day long, attacking me proudly. People are so, so quick, uh, well, not all people, but people are so quick to judge those things which they don't know and they don't understand. Uh, and and in, our, in our, uh, reasoning society, I'll say, where, where everything is about the mind of man and what I know and what I think and what I feel and what I... I believe, me, myself, right? The, the unholy trinity. I've got my book up here that I haven't, haven't started reading yet. i got to get into it one of these days. The unholy trinity by Martin Luther uh, against the idol of me, myself, and I. Um, people are so quick to judge against those who believe in something that's outside themselves, that, that doesn't come from human reason and wisdom, um, and that's, and then attack that which is comes from outside um, human reason. Didn't used to be that way. Didn't used to be that way. Um, many of the people who attack now, the the basis for their education and the knowledge that they have, came from 
uh, or, or came came from a study of God's creation so that they might understand it better. Uh, but it has been twisted by many to become a reason to deny the existence of God. Hey, Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you guys running late. Ah, poo, 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 poo. All right, let's, uh, let's get to our reading today. Isaiah chapter 14, 1 to 23. Now, we, because I wasn't with you yesterday, um, we missed, what did we read? Yeah, what would we have read yesterday? Isaiah 10, 12 to 27, 33 to 34. Um, yeah, you might want to go back and read chapter 10. We're going to, we're jumping though, because it goes to chapter 14 instead of uh, hitting 11, 12, and 13. Um, so Isaiah, of course, there's 66 chapters in Isaiah. So if we read every one of them, um, and a lot of them are a repetition or uh, such. So that's why we have lectionaries to kind of guide our reading. All right. Isaiah 14, chap chapter 14, verse 1 through 23, starting here at verse 1. For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will again choose Israel and will set them in their own land and sojourners will join them and attach themselves to the house of Jacob. And the peoples will take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel will possess them in the Lord's land as male and female slaves. They will take captive those who were their captors and rule over those who oppressed them. When the Lord has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you were made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. Oh, isn't that interesting? And now we move from prose into poetry again. How the oppressor has ceased, the insolent fury ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers, that struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses rejoice at you, the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were laid low, no woodcutter comes up against us. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you, all who were leaders of the earth. It raises from their thrones all who were kings of nations. All of them will answer and say to you, You too have become as weak as we. You have become like us. Your pomp has brought you down to Sheol, the sound of your harps. Maggots are laid as a bed beneath you, and worms are your covers. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Those who see you will stare at you and ponder over you. Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a desert and overthrew its cities, who did not let his prisoners go home? All the kings of the nations lie in glory, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out away from your grave, like a loathed branch, clothed with the slain, those pierced by the sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a dead body trampled underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial, <clears throat> because you have destroyed your land, you have slain your people. May the offspring of evildoers never more be named. Prepare slaughter for his sons, because of the guilt of their fathers, lest they rise and possess the earth, and fill the face of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord of hosts. And I will cut off from Babylon name and remnant, descendants and posterity, declares the Lord. And I will make it a possession of the hedgehog and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord of the hosts. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and will be forever. Amen. Ha! Huh. What have we here? Okay, so the first part, verses 1 through, uh, 1 and 2, um, is the promise of the Lord um, restoring Jacob. The Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will again choose Israel. Uh, setting them in their own land. And so they'll, the, the, the promise of the restoration of Israel after the Babylonian captivity is always a theme in Isaiah, just as the, the coming... Uh, is that hardcover? Uh, if you mean my treasury of daily prayer, no, it's a, it's a floppy cover. Um, what other book did I hold up? Oh, this one. Yeah, the most holy... The, no, it's a... It's a it's a paperback. Um, CPH. I don't. I don't think. Um, I don't think they ever published it in a hardcover. It's written. This is a. This isn't written by Luther. It's. It's a study of Luther against the idol, written by Michael. Michael Lockwood. Um, I don't know if I can. Yeah, you can't see Michael's name here under the title, but um, yeah. Uh, no, it's. A, it's a floppy cover. Um, it's available on cph.com. It doesn't. I don't have the price on it here. I usually write the price in the front of the book because no, I don't see the cost of the book in the front here. Um, anyway, yeah, no soft cover. Um, the the restoration of 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 Israel. So um, the time will come in Isaiah's in Isaiah's. Uh, book, you've got both the wrath of God coming and you've got his promise of restoration. So you've got, you've got an interplay between those two going on. God will punish um, sinful Israel, but he will further punish um, those who rise up against his people. Um, even though he uses, uh, even though he uses the Babylonians and the Assyrians and the and Syria to to destroy the northern and southern kingdoms and take the people. Um, he will restore them and they will pay for what they've done to God's people in the end. Um, and so that's that's uh, the, how the oppressor ceases, the insolent fury ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers. He struck the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows. Uh, so the the people who struck Israel will be struck back. Um, and then, uh, then when the time comes, when they, uh, when those kings Nebuchadnezzar and and others, um, are down, uh, the, the those who have already died will greet them, um, but they will be set apart. They will not be, uh, they will not be resting peacefully, shall I say? They'll be in in the condemnation. Now I'm. The, the one verse here that I, I'm having a struggle with, and I, I don't have my my Bible software open anywhere here to, to look at this, and maybe you caught it too, but it's verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I don't remember. I don't remember um, what this verse is talking about. Bear with me a minute here while I... Well, I open the the magic software um, and I get it over the other screen so I can see it here. And then I'm going to open, I'm going to just go quick here. Just bear with me a minute. Um, I'm going to look at uh, Kretzmann's popular commentary of the Old Testament just real, real briefly. I mean, I could open an entire study on this and do a bunch, but I, I don't want to go that that in depth at the moment. I just want an answer to um, Isaiah chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Oh no, I don't want the I don't want the beginning of Isaiah. I want Isaiah. Oh, my num locks off. That's why fourteen, twelve. Um, how thou how art thou fallen from heaven? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Um, talking about the devil. Um, Kretzmann translates it this way. How, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of morning? Um, o day star. Lucifer is day star. Or, or uh, some said morning star, too. 
Um, literally, O day star, son of heaven, the reference being to the high and influential position occupied by the Babylonian ruler, um, like a giant tree which has been felled. Um, um, and so it's talking about, it is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. And, and positioning, well, who's the enemy of God's people ultimately? The old wicked foe, right? Um, and so... Um, it's interesting, though, how, how you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn. And we talk about the angels being fallen. And then, and then Jesus, when the, when the 70 return, when the 70 return, he sends out his 70 or 72 disciples when they return. Uh, and they're all excited about casting out demons and healing the sick and everything else. Um, uh, Jesus says, uh, oh, how I saw... Um, <laughs> Lucifer fall, or I saw Satan fall. I don't remember the exact text, which which name he uses, um, but he how he falls. And and here Isaiah talks about the falling of the old wicked foe, uh, how you were cut down to the ground, who laid you who laid the nations low. I you know, and I I haven't wrapped this into a uh, theological homiletical press here. We just looked at this text, um, and I and I I, I guess the one. I don't guess. I know the one, the one thing that I would be tempted and, and encourage you to take away from this is that even though God, in his wrath, because of the idolatry of, of Israel, uh, took them into the Babylonian captivity, turned his back on them for a time, but didn't forget them. Remember, he had Daniel and others to take care of them, to guide uh, Nebuchadnezzar's nation for their safety. And he brings them back, that remnant, and he restores them uh, to have everything they had. And though you and I were uh, born in iniquity, conceived and born in iniquity, and turned away from God and hating him, yet even while we were his enemies, he sent his son to die for you. Right? And so, through Christ, well, through, through his work, he makes you perfect. He restores you uh, to, to the status of his righteousness, right? Not by anything that you have done or by any righteousness in you, because there is no worthiness or righteousness or merit in you, but by the blood of Christ shed for you on the cross. I guess to tie it to Advent, in this day, at this time, he comes, Right? The Lord comes in the manger so that he can go to the cross for you and I and give his life for our sins, that we might be made righteous for his sake. Amen. Let's go to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you bestowed upon your servant Nicholas of Marta, of Mara the perpetual gift of charity. Grant your church the grace to deal in generosity and love with children and with all who are poor and distressed and to plead the cause of those who have no helper, especially toss, tossed by tempest of doubt or grief. We ask this for the sake of him who gave his life for us, even your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue this morning with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning, having missed Monday morning, precious Savior, you search me and know me. There are no secrets I can conceal from you. My heart, mind, and life are filled with sin. 
The good I want to do is not what I do. I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. Have mercy on me, O God. Comfort me with the mercy of your cross. Remind me that you have suffered, bled, and died for me. Let me live in the light of your grace, confidently knowing that as far as the east is from the west, you have removed my sin from me, and I am forgiven in you. Show that same steadfast love, mercy, and grace to everyone who struggles with guilt, addiction, spiritual affliction, temptation, suffering, or pain. Sustain them by your holy word, especially this day we pray for, for uh, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Deanna, the family of Annette Lane, and all who call upon your most holy name. Help them, strengthen them, protect them, beat down the work of sin, death, and the devil in their lives. Remind them that you have engraved their names on the palms of your hands. Do not let them be lost in despair. Let them take refuge under the banner of your cross. This day, O Lord, I cast all my cares upon you, as you have promised sustain me, rescue me, deliver me. Be my rock and my fortress, for you are my God. You are always with me, and I have nothing to fear. You have spoken, and you will do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotion to a close on this Tuesday, December 6th. God's peace be with you, and we will be back here tomorrow, Tuesday morning, for our uh, time together. God's peace.